Hi, I'm Ash from Droning On, and in this video, we'll do unbox a brand new racing quadcopter from Swell Pro. In here is the Swift 2. The Swift 2 is a ready to fly quadcopter which includes everything you need to go, including the transmitter, the battery, the receiver, the camera, the lot boasting a maximum flight speed of up to 150 kilometers an hour. This is a brushless quadcopter and it's a 220 class. The transmitter isn't any old cheap transmitter either. As you'll see, it has a touch screen, on-screen display with up to a kilometer range. And it's also got a really long flight time. Enjoy the review and please remember to subscribe. So this is how the Swell Pro Swift 2 arrives. Let's unbox it and see what's inside. Oh, I don't think they could have used more sellotape if they'd have tried. It's certainly packaged very safely. Uh, so rest assured, it will arrive in one piece. So we've got the box here, nice picture of the Swell Pro on the front. Uh, and their caption, don't blink because it's fast. So obviously we'll test that later. So that's what you have in the box. Uh, an instruction manual, we'll have a look through that later. We've got the quadcopter itself. The packaging's really nice here, by the way, I'll add as well. It looks nice quality. There is the quadcopter. You can tell this thing's fast from the, the scale and the size and the proportions of the arms here. It's, um, it, it's a good looking quadcopter. It's nice and lightweight. We've got a nice carbon fiber uh, design here. Uh, we've got three blade five inch props. Uh, they can be swapped as well for four inch props if need be to get a bit more power. We've also got some 2205, uh, 2300 kV motors on here. So considering that this is a 220 class quadcopter, they should give this thing plenty of power on the three cell battery that comes with it. I'm not sure if you can use a four cell with this, uh, I will check that with Swell Pro. We've got the power connector here, standard connector for three cell, four cell uh, batteries. The antennas here, these are the 2.4 gig control antennas. They look quite vulnerable there. They're quite close to the props. Uh, if you did crash and roll, these could eventually get distorted out of place and potentially could impact uh, the props. But uh, I would recommend perhaps putting a bit of protection around them or maybe just actually flexing them backwards and holding them backwards with a, a zip tie or similar. Got the battery strap here, which looks nice and generous in size. An anti-slip mat here as well to stop the battery moving around. Uh, underneath, we've got some landing legs here. Uh, they look fairly strong, actually. Normally, they're the first things to break on most quadcopters. And this is quite nice as well because all of the components are hidden or protected within this carbon fiber shell. So if you do have a crash or a tumble, at least they're not going to get damaged too easily. Lots of ventilation around the sides of this carbon fiber shell. Uh, there's holes cut in the carbon fiber as well to save weight, I guess. These are not for ventilation because they are uh, covered on the other side by foam, it feels like. Uh, looking at the back, we've got some lights as well, some LED displays here. So we've probably got turn indicator lights and brake lights. Uh, no lights on the front, but we do have a camera here with what looks to be a nice big lens on there. Yeah, that's a lovely wide angle lens. Uh, the FOV on this one actually uh, is 120 degrees. It's an 800 TVL camera, FPV camera with a 2.5 aperture. So that means in low light conditions, we're gonna get, still gonna get pretty good picture from this one. Uh, hidden within there as well is a 40 channel, 5.8 gig transmitter, uh, which um, actually has a nice feature. It's got an adjustable power output. Now I guess that's to save them having to make a different version. Uh, based on the regulations and rules of each country. So you can switch that FPV uh, video transmitter between 25, 200, and even 400 milliwatts. Uh, I don't know if you'll get away with 400 milliwatts in most countries, but it's there anyway. The camera does have an on-screen display as well. Um, we'll have a look at that when we do the test flight later to see what information we get through that display. Some reviewers have mistakenly said that this is waterproof. It is not. Some of the components inside are protected indeed, but they are not protected for waterproofing. They are protected simply from dust and ingress of dirt. So don't dunk this in a puddle. You will not be covered under warranty. There's a circular antenna here. Um, 
Looks like a fairly well-made one, actually. It's not budget at all. Um, it's also replaceable. There is a, an SMA or an RPSMA connector down there. I'm not sure which one it is without unscrewing it. So you could easily swap that out for a taller antenna if you wanted. But I like the low profile of this one, actually. It's quite nice. On the side is a USB port here. Um, I have plugged this into CleanFlight and it connects. So you, this is fully configurable via CleanFlight, which is also great. So you can change the flight modes as you wish. There is also a small button here and a small LED display. It looks like a numerical display. I'm thinking that that is probably to set either the video transmitter milliwatt power or the video transmitter band and channel. Uh, we'll check that later. So all in all, it's a nicely made quad. I love the low profile of it as well. It's nice and sleek. Um, the lights are good. The motors are nice and powerful as well. These bright luminous props are great. If you do crash this in a, a field with long grass, you'll definitely find it again because these do stand out. So let's have a look at the other bits that come in the box. So we've got two batteries. Now this is not a cheap quadcopter package, so I would expect it to have come with two batteries. We've got uh, the two batteries here are three cell 2600 milliwatt uh, batteries. Uh, they look like they're Swell Pro proprietary batteries. Um, I would imagine they're actually produced by somebody else and branded with Swell Pro. Swell Pro. Uh, they come with a balance connector. Got a power adapter here. It's actually, that looks like a European plug. It's not a UK plug. And we get a charger, which does fortunately take a standard, uh, what we call in the UK, a kettle lead. So that's good. Um, it's actually a two, three, and four cell balance charger as well. So you can use this with some of your other aircraft as well. So that's quite nice. Uh, instructions on the top to show the wiring diagram and the outputs. In here we have a USB cable, so obviously that's for connecting it to clean flight. Uh, we've got a big spanner, that's good. Most quadcopters you get these tiny little spanners that bend when you use them for the first time, so a good solid metallic spanner. And an accessories and spares bag, so we've got two spare undercarriages in there, uh, which is good because these do snap quite often. Uh, and also a spare prop nut as well. And then the transmitter. Now it's quite nice actually to get a transmitter with a quadcopter. Generally you get some cheap budget transmitter. Uh, this one actually is quite nice. It's proprietary and made by Swell Pro. Um, got a nice metal brace on the back. Uh, the gimbals are very, very lightweight, very light, hardly any resistance on there at all. Um, they are adjustable in height as well. You can screw them up and down. We've got switches along the top, so lock and unlock the motors. Uh, we've got lights on and off. That's quite a nice feature as well. I guess if you want to save power, but LEDs consume barely any power at all anyway. Uh, we've got stabilise, advanced and intermediate. Now, Swell Pro have notified me already that they've, they acknowledge they've printed these in the wrong order. Um, advanced uh, obviously should be at the bottom. So you've got stabilised, intermediate and then advanced. So they fixed that and we'll test that out during the flight test. And then on-screen display. So the quadcopter does have an OSD. We've also got a display on here. I'm not sure whether this is for the quadcopter or for the transmitter, but we'll check that. Uh, finally, we do have this lovely big screen here as well, and this is touch screen. I'm told by Swell Pro that we can even change the PIDs of the quadcopter from this transmitter using the screen as well whilst you're flying. So that's really cool. Rather than having to go into clean flight, change your configuration, unplug it, fly it again, that could be quite a nice feature. Uh, the only thing it doesn't come with are batteries for the transmitter. Uh, it takes four AA type batteries. Uh, that's quite nice that it only takes four and not eight as most transmitters do. Finally, we've got two buttons on the back. They're both labeled alarm. I'm only, I'm guessing that when you press and hold them both, the quadcopter emits a beep so that you can find it. So that's everything that's in the box. Oh, besides some spare props, that's good. Yes, they're also five inch and they're in black. So if you wanna change the colors on this to all black, you can. But I like these luminescent props because when I lose this thing in a hedge, I'll be able to find it. So we'll have a quick look in clean flight now and then we will get on to the flight test. We'll now take a very quick look at the default clean flight configuration just to see how the Swift 2 is set up out of the box. So connect the USB and then fire up clean flight on the laptop. The first thing that we notice is that the accelerometer is nicely calibrated already. Quite a rare sight on an RTF quadcopter these days. 
Moving to the port config, the boring tab, we can see that MSP, which stands for Multi WII Serial Protocol, is enabled on UART 2, possibly for some of the additional telemetry features. Configuration tab, and we've got One Shot 125 enabled, and so clearly the FC and speed controllers support it and will make the most of this faster communication protocol. VBAT is enabled, which is going to provide voltage monitoring for telemetry, and interestingly, the current sensor is not active. Finally, we've got soft serial enabled as well as the LED strip feature so that the LEDs on the rear can be controlled. The loop time is at 2000, which is good. Failsafe is configured set to stage two enabled as well as set to land. The PIDs all look fairly conservative and I'm told by Swellpro that the PIDs are tuned perfectly from the factory as well as giving a satisfactory amount of rate adjustment. I have the transmitter turned on as you can see and all the channels are working nicely and I have to add that the gimbals on the transmitter are really nice indeed. The modes tab shows us that the arm switch is configured to aux 1. Angle mode is indeed as we'd expect configured to the mode switch which is mapped to aux 3 and that gives us a combination of angle, horizon and of course rate mode. We've got the dedicated beeper allocated interestingly to aux 5 and to aux 6, unsure of the reason why there, and the LED switch is configured to aux 2 which allows you to turn them on and off. And finally the control for the OSD is there as well. Air mode is also configured and it's also tied to aux 1 which is also our arm switch, therefore air mode is permanently enabled essentially. A quick look at the LED configuration, which of course you can change if you so wish. Sensors tab also shows us that everything is working nicely there. And finally, if we run a dump command via the CLI, we can see that it's running CleanFlight 1.13.0, which is only one minor release behind the latest 1.14, but perfectly acceptable. I do praise Swellpro actually for not going down the same route as Walkera and butchering Clean Flight and Beta Flight. The Swift 2's flight controller is fully configurable and open, and that's a positive. So that's the Clean Flight configuration. However, at the point of unplugging the USB cable, I discovered a problem. My USB port had actually become loose. I undid around six screws underneath and removed the underside cover to reveal the interior where I could then see the two front speed controllers, the 2.4 gig receiver as well as the rear LED light PCB all neatly installed inside. At that point the USB port actually then dropped out. Looking at the PCB itself it would seem that minimal solder had been applied to keep it in place. I did verify this with Swellpro and I sent them this video. They confirmed that they had immediately asked the engineers to investigate and to check their current stock. The ports on those in stock were well secured and so I think that I was simply unlucky here as it shouldn't happen on a $600 quadcopter. Swellpro took my report very seriously, responded very positively and are still investigating now. The Swellpro Swift 2 does come with a bundle transmitter. You turn it on by pressing both power buttons at the same time and it has the usual switch warnings that you'd expect from most other transmitters, as well as playing you a nice jingle. It incorporates timer functionality, but you'll also notice that I'm pressing the screen. Yes, a manufacturer has finally given us a touch screen on a transmitter and it works really well, even swiping works quite effectively. There is a fly mode button here that I briefly explored, but when later consulting the manual, it actually recommends not to touch that part of the configuration and that it's actually for experts. And so I reverted my changes back just to be sure. There is also a comprehensive settings menu, which you can scroll through. Here you can configure many settings of the quad as with any other transmitter, but there are also model memories and bind features. And so I wonder what transmitter protocol this unit and receiver are based on, as they might be using standard manufacturer specifications, therefore meaning that you could use this transmitter with other receivers. I'm enjoying using the menu system at this point. It's very easy to use, very responsive and quite impressive. Swiping on the main screen also lets you view other pages of information, which is nice and useful. There didn't seem to be any indication of switch positions or mode, but perhaps these are only shown when connected to the aircraft, and we'll test that during the flight test. Overall, the transmitter and the interface have a nice design. It's easy to use. 
I had planned for this review to be one single video, but I don't want to rush the flight test. Therefore, it has a dedicated part two episode, as well as a full summary of the positives, negatives, and the conclusion. So subscribe now and give us a thumbs up if this part one review was useful. Thank you very much for watching. See you in part two. Thank you.